I've been talking about it from the level of burning, but if we go one step back up, of course, there's what's happening at the fat cell, which is that in the absence of insulin, we can't stop breaking down fat. Um, so that no surprise in the case of the diabetic, the person's losing an extraordinary amount of weight. And this is something I've alluded to before in various outlets, namely the, ph the, the phenomenon of diabulimia, which is when a type 1 diabetic, uh, before they're diagnosed, they've become quite used to being able to eat whatever they want and be really, really skinny. Now they feel miserable. They're dying in this state where their ketones are getting into the realm of acidosis and their hyperglycemia is destroying blood vessels and nerves, but they get used to being thin. And now when they start taking their insulin injections, they aren't. They start gaining fat very, very quickly. They learn this. And unfortunately, in some instances, it leads to them abusing that fact and continuing to eat whatever they want and simply deliberately underdosing the insulin to stay thin. This is because if insulin is low, they can't stop burning fat. Thus, they're as thin as they want, albeit um, pathologically so, unfortunately. Interestingly, in type 2 diabetes, as I said before, that's when we have too much insulin. So this should be resulting in the cell shifting only over to glucose burning. And there is still some glucose burning, but because of the insulin resistance, it's created a unique, a unique, very odd scenario which is a little more nuanced than is it than it is in the case of type 1 diabetes because there's more tissues involved in different ways. So insulin is high, but as the body has become insulin resistant, the fat cells are altered in their responsiveness to insulin. In fact, the fat cell, I argue, is one of the first, if not the first tissue to become insulin resistant. Normally, insulin would be telling the fat cell to hold on to its fat. Insulin is saying to the fat cell, hey, I'm not going to let other tissue. I'm not going to let the muscle use you for fuel. So just keep it in the fat cell. You just store that fat because I'm telling the muscle right now and the fat cell to use glucose for fuel. That can still happen to some degree. There is still some glucose utilization happening, especially because remember, there are some tissues that don't really need the insulin for glucose uptake and some degree of insulin functioning is sufficient to allow some glucose burning. But the, the high fat, the, the high insulin is having this weird effect because remember insulin resistance is two things. It's both insulin not working well, like we have at the muscle, at the fat cell where it's not inhibiting lipolysis anymore. So the fat cell is breaking down fat. So free fatty acids are higher, but the insulin may still be sufficiently working at the muscle to tell it not to use the fat. So once again, we come to this scenario where in the type two diabetic, we can have high glucose and high free fatty acids. In general, the type 2 diabetic is primarily using glucose and can't shift out of glucose burning. This is something I've alluded to before called metabolic inflexibility. Metabolic inflexibility is nothing more than the high insulin altering the Randall cycle, the glucose fatty acid cycle. In a healthy individual, you eat a mixed macronutrient meal with fats, carbohydrates, and, and proteins. Because there's an insulin increase, you go to glucose burning. Once you've gone through that glucose, glucose and insulin comes down, and you get into the fasted state, now you're fat burning. What had been noticed decades ago now is that in a type 2 diabetic or someone with insulin resistance, they, they are sort of stuck in that glucose burning mode, that even though they haven't eaten for some period of time, and in a healthy insulin sensitive person, they would have transitioned into the fat burning state of fasting. They don't. They stay stuck in glucose burning. And that's because of this high insulin that is reflective of insulin resistance. And of course, that's very much reflective of type 2 diabetes.